Hi everyone, I'm Edita Sitar from Laundry Basket Quilts. Welcome to Quilting Window Live. I am so excited that you took the time and wanted to quilt with me today. Yep, you heard me right. We're going to be sewing and quilting together today. This is something new. I've never done it before. We're doing a live show quilt alone for one of my favorite little quilts for the season. This quilt ho called Holiday Forest and the pattern is available on our website. It's super cute. I showed it to you guys last week and I invited you to do a quilt along with me for one day. Just stitch with me for one day. So on Wednesday, I have posted a blog on our website. So go to our website after the show and you can find a step-by-step -step information what we're going to do today. Um, but for now, stay here with me. We're going to have fun. We're just going to show you how to make one of the blocks for this beautiful quilt. And since I saw you last time, I've been working really hard. I took leftovers from this quilt right here. I'm going to show you. And I already quilted my quilt. Uh, I made this one with a jelly roll from Linen Texture 2 and I took the leftovers, matched it up with a jelly roll from a seamstress collection and I got to finish another quilt that is behind me right there. This one has 46 trees. The original one has 20 trees in it. So excited about it. Oh my gosh. But before we start sewing, uh, a little housekeeping. First of all, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much for joining us for our 12 days for Christmas. Thank you so much for all your support this year. I so much appreciate. And I know a lot of you have been asking me like last minute gifts, ideas, something for yourself, something for your friends. So I prepared a little basket, especially that we are sewing today. I picked up like basic things for anybody that just want to start or refresh the sewing room. And in the basket, I have one of my favorite things. It's the ironing boards, the wool ironing board. So that one is really nice. And we have those on our website in two sizes. This is the smaller one. This is the bigger one. Either one would be great. Another thing that I really like for gift is of course our book. And I just got the most amazing news. We're on a second printing of the book already. So thank you, thank you, thank you everyone. This is so amazing. And if you get the book, you probably want it those cute little bookmarks that we just released we have them in our holiday colors in green and reds super cute mark your pages of your projects for next year what you're planning to do another fun thing that we have is this cute little irons i love that iron especially when i'm traveling or doing things or, uh, you know i'm on a road this work great and of course i have to have a cute little pen cushion and i chose for you guys this cute little pen cushion perfect little gift and again the top is made out of wool so it's really nice to put your pins into it and since we're doing rainbow today i picked up two rainbow things that i thought you would like uh, rainbow clips because when you finish your quilt you're going to want to put a binding and those are great for the binding the quilt behind doesn't have a binding yet the one that i have it oops on a table i have binding already on it and i use some leftover strips for that one and i did a scrappy binding so i love to pin my binding hold it in place uh with those clips when i'm stitching around and i chose that cute little bundle it calls little rainbow and that's uh, century solids a cute little bundle a little bit brighter than what i have in a linen texture too so for girls that love this bright fun feel to it those are wonderful and what i love about those fabric is the color is on both sides so you can use it anywhere you want it to and you have the color on both sides so it's not like a regular printed fabric where the color is only on one side so you have a right side and a wrong side of the fabric and of course, in my basket, you can skip this. Those are our So Daisy little bookmarks and So Daisy, the um, little uh, sewing uh, things for your spool. So that way, when you travel, you can plug the top and the bottom and have your needles right in the middle of your thread. So those are really cute for last minute gifts. 
another thing that I recommend for last minute gift for you, for your friend, and maybe for January when, you know, the Christmas colors kind of weave away and you want something simple and fun, our um, Moonstone collection have been quite popular. Let me show you this. I have prepared so many fun things for you. And this is a sweet pea uh, kit. And this is the Moonstone collection. And why did I chose this collection to future today? Because guess what? From all the quilts that I have made from our holiday forest, that one got so many good comments. And everybody was like, oh my gosh, that is so beautiful. So I was like, okay, let's see. Let's bring those fabrics in. And if maybe you want to do... Your your holiday forest in uh, you know this moonstone collection we have jelly rolls we have charm packs we have fed aids we have kits so you could go ahead and grab some of those and enjoy it and on this side I have few more kits from our moonstone collection like the gemstone this is a really cute simple quilt and it's just really nice and soft and delicate it has the blacks the grays and a little bit pink so that's for gifts for this coming year. You have been so patient. Let's get into our sewing. So when you're gonna be making this quilt, we're gonna be working on just one block. We're doing the holiday forest. Uh, we're gonna start up with a jelly roll and you're gonna choose any jelly roll you would like to. And I, like I said, have the linen texture to jelly roll, but you could go ahead and choose on our website. We have all all different jelly rolls that's a moonstone jelly roll and you could go ahead and start up with the jelly roll the jelly roll are two and a half inch strips and you have 40 strips in a jelly roll for this small size quilt you only need 20 strips so you have plenty to make either two quilts or you can use leftovers for table runners or other project i took my leftovers and i made it into a second quilt with another jelly roll and made the quilt much bigger then you need a background fabric my original quilt that i have it right here on a table is the background is done from linen texture too it's a, um, a really nice soft soft background mimics a little bit a muslin to me it has really fun flavor to it and i use that one on both of my quilts on the small one and the large one but guess what just as i was already making my quilt something brand new got into the office I'm so excited for you guys. It's cloud nine. You can say I'm in the clouds right now. I'm gonna take this out of the bag so you see the colors. Cloud nine is our newest light collection. Look at those lights. Can you see it? And what I love about these lights is that it has a touches of pink, a little bit of green, and a little bit of blue. So if you're making your quilt shading from blues through yellows going into the pinks you can use the pink backgrounds behind your pink strips you can use the light ones right here in the middle and those uh, touches of blue in the bottom part of the quilt so also your backgrounds are gonna be shading really nice into a rainbow arrangement this is beautiful look at the pieces so many favorites from my collection in just really soft low volume and we have some new pieces like this one and this one look at this cutie with the green little branches isn't that just beautiful look at those i love it and then just the taupe and just gray on gray just beautiful so enjoy it go to our website we have fat quarters fat eights and half yards and yardage that's all that we have from for now on and I myself, when I get uh, low values, I always grab the half yard bundles because you get the best prices on those and then you get enough for many different projects. And if you're like me, I like the contrast between dark and a light in my quilts. It really helps make the quilt look beautiful. So uh, to me, the lights are just as important as the dark pieces in my quilt. Okay, enough talking. I took my jelly roll, I open it up, I start by putting it on my ironing board 
and I used a touch of best press on the wrong side of the fabric and I sprayed it to give a little stiffness. Then I go ahead and I cut my pieces following my directions in the pattern. And we talked about it. I asked you to do one thing, one favorite. Please purchase our pattern for the direction so that way you have all of the measurements that you need. And I'm going to cut strips in four different sizes. This is the smallest one, then this was my second strip, third and a fourth. This is for the tree. So when I wanna make my tree like this, I need those sizes. I'm shading it from light to dark to make a really cute. On this quilt right here, all that I did is took a strip and I cut out of one strip all the color and shuffled them around. So that way, sometimes the bottom of the tree was light, sometimes the top of the tree was light. So it does not matter. It really came out nice and you can make a combination. It depends which fabric lays next to uh, the other to get that shading it down. Notice this is darker and it's going down to the lighter tree right here, uh, lighter branches down here. So it does not matter. But for here, we're gonna specifically cut it following the directions. That way you have a nice color arrangement. Then we need to cut our background pieces and also we're gonna cut it first, our background to two and a half and then section to the correct section for each of our pieces. And now once everything is cut, we're gonna finish by small rectangle for the tree trunk and two light rectangle on each side. Once your pieces are cut, the fun begin. You're going to start. Let me move some things. And I'm gonna start by the simple one right here, the bottom uh, part right here. I'm going to do a tree trunk. I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, and it, um, as I'm doing this, I just remember something. Many of you would ask me right now, do you trim the little zigzag right here? Because notice my strip that I cut is perfectly straight, okay? But when you cut it from a jelly roll, top and the bottom has a little zigzag to it. Notice it that it's larger than two and a half because the companies that cut jelly rolls, they understand that you need a little bit more room there. So what I do is, A, you can go ahead and trim those off or what I do is I don't trim it. I go ahead, take my pieces, I center it up. Notice this. Okay, do you see how that zigzag sticks on the left and the right? I'm gonna sew it. I'm gonna finish sewing this to this, push my seam allowance towards the dark, do the same thing on this side, sew it, and then when I'm done, I'm going to go ahead, look at this, I just have this piece finished. The next thing, I'm gonna trim it all the way, just check that everything is perfect and make sure that it's the size that I desire, what it's seven and a half by two and a half. So you wanna make sure that everything is trim and perfect. Why do I leave this to later on? Because it's easier for me and then I can follow my sides and make sure that everything come out right. So this is how I, I would do my tree trunk. Okay, we're done with the tree trunk. Let's put it to the side. The next step is I'm going to start taking my strips and I'm going to go ahead and place right sides together, my square. And again, I'm going to match the side right here. Yes, and then I'm gonna draw a diagonal line right here on my light. How do I do that? Let me show you. Oh, do you ever use this sew line pencil? I do. I love them. They're amazing. They're so easy to use it. And I have one right here in my hand that has a pink, um, um, uh, like the end on it, very delicate. I don't push it too hard. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my ruler. I'm going to match my ruler right here with the side of my square. Then I'm going to match point and point and I'm going to draw a line. I want to see my points when I draw that line because I want that line to be exactly where it needs to be. And I'm being very gentle. I just need a guide. Sometimes you can just even fold your 
square in half and pinch it and have that line to guide you. I like to draw because simply I like to see. And you know, me and my glasses, I like to see what I'm doing. So now I'm gonna put the other side and I'm gonna draw it on the other side. Again, from point to point, make sure that they are going in the right direction. So, and look, my brain right away goes, I want to take this white line, that 45 degree line on my ruler, match it up with the side of my square. I'm not following the zigzag. I'm just following the side of my square. And you can draw this before even you place the pieces together. You can draw it before you lay it onto your pieces together. I don't know why I like to always place it, match things up, everything looks beautiful sides because the cut that's my guide how I match I'm gonna take a tiny little pin and I'm gonna pin it in place and notice it how I pin it in place I put my pin towards my line because I'm gonna be stitching on that line so the point points it for me so here so here and I'm gonna prepare this for my sewing in a few minutes I'm gonna be sewing with you and I will do this to all the units all the units look at this one again and this time it's a little bit different because notice the rectangle is longer so I'm gonna place it right sides together I'm gonna match it up and I noticed something as I was making this quilt I cannot see where this is right here where this point is so maybe just folding gently and giving a little pinch right here so we give me a little crease right there so that way I can see it and again I can draw because guess what you're gonna set but you just measure and you're gonna know where the two and a half is and I want a double protection I want a, as much help as I can get I'm looking at this line the line is laying right next to my 45 degree angle then I'm looking at this point and I see where I pinched it gently so that way when I draw my line right there I know that I am pretty close to what I need and again I'm gonna take a pin and pin it in place so you're gonna be going like this and just make sure you have the right pieces of light with the right rectangle in the middle because it's easy to shift things and move things so making sure that everything is laying the right way place draw my line and then that tip is the only one that I'm gonna just do one side because I first have to sew it, flip it up, and then I can place my next one and sew it. So I already have prepared a few of those and I'm ready for sewing with you guys. Now I'm gonna push this to the side and bring the ones that I prepare. I've been excited about seeing you. So let me sit down and start sewing and during my sewing i'm gonna ask erin if you guys have any questions any concerns so all of this i prepare and i just drew my lines perfect ready set go and that's my tip of my tree i'm gonna ask erin please see if there is any questions i'm gonna be sewing and you guys going to ask and i'm gonna try to multitask and answer your questions oh and speaking about sewing Today for the sewing, I chose my Genomi. This is one of the machines that we have it here in the studio. I love this machine because it's a workhorse. Uh, how you say that? Workhorse. Workhorse. Thank you, Erin. <laughs> and um, she is fast. She's accurate, and I really like her. Uh, what I did is for this part of my sewing, normally I have a cute quarter inch foot on my sewing machine, really like that one, but for this sewing, I have placed a regular foot. I am not falling quarter inch. All that I'm doing is stitching on a line. And I notice when I have my quarter inch, I would come up here and it will push and make a booboo -boo for me. And I don't want that. I want it to be able to set my piece down just like this. And this is something I want to talk to you because my brain right away is you know making me think about that when i stitch right here i'm gonna gently just the shadow stay on the outside on this side on my pin side 
of the line. So I'm not gonna stitch exactly on the line, I'm gonna be right next to the line. Why am I doing this? Because I noticed that when I'm stitching, I'm building up a thread right here. And when I open this up, I always was just a tiny bit too short when I open it out. And those pieces are exactly cut. If you worry about this, you can always cut your pieces longer and then you have room to trim on the left and the right. I decide I want to be exact the measurements and then pay attention when I'm sewing. So right there, I'm going to be sewing right here on this side of my line. And it's just, you can hardly see it. The line is right there. I'm going to show you the close up when I stitch. It's on the left side, just next to that line. And that would accommodate that when I open this up, it will cover my thread and my measurements will stay really nice, okay? Any help I can give myself to do a nice sewing, I'm going to do that. So I just right now set it in. I'm using cotton thread on the top. I'm using cotton thread in the bobbin. I'm using 23 uh, 10 from Aurofil. I noticed I still have my mask on. You guys didn't even tell me that. <clears throat> But um, yes, do you know we oh, wear masks in our office, so I always have to have one and I keep putting it on my arm so I wouldn't lose it. Yes. And oh, and speaking of masks, over the holidays, I already started I'm making a bunch of masks with the low volume as the liner because my kids and all my friends love the uh, homemade masks. And if you ever wanted it, we have a pattern for it. It's free pattern to all of you. You can go to our website, download the free pattern for a mask. I hear some good, good, good things about it. And when I make my masks, I use a t-shirt for around the ears because my ears sometimes hurt from the elastic. So something you maybe want to do over around the holidays, just few fresh ones, especially in the winter time when you those. So now I'm going to start sewing. Erin, oh, and I have a, a Microtex needle uh, and um, it's really, really good. I uh, I think the size I have it right now is 70 or 80. I'm not going to tell you exactly because I don't remember when I put it in, but I usually put 70 or 80 uh, sharp needle in my sewing ma machine, ma Macrotex needle. So, Erin, do we have any questions? Ooh, I love sewing. <laughs> we do have a few already. Okay. Um, Nancy was wondering, so the holiday pattern, does it come with both sizes? in there to make the For larger the, one behind you and the little no one. it only comes with the smaller size but it's so easy to change the size you just make more blocks so i double on the blocks and i and as i was making them i laid them out and like oh no i want another row i want more and i already know that this what i'm sewing right now is going to be a little table runner so what i'm going to do is just use a one row one row for my table runner and i I'm kind of going back and forth. I'm going to do one blue and white because I'm using blue uh, dishes, blue willow dishes for my Christmas dinner. But also I want to do one that is just light with the darker background because it looks so snowy and magical. And we don't have snow in California where I live. So I always look forward to a little bit of snow. And you know what? I'm going to do some chain sewing as we're visiting. What that means is that I'm not going to stop. I'm going to go ahead and do a next one. And I wanted to point to something. When I'm sewing, I start from here and sew straight down. From here, straight down. Why do I do this? Because I don't want to. I want to have a little bit of a control and I can put my fingers on each side hold it really nice so I catch this point and I saw it it really really nice okay do we have any other questions oh well, we do uh, dr. Rodriguez was wondering if you use a special ruler to trim you know, I'm just using my Creative Grids basic ruler. This is really nice one. And I chose this one, the four and a half by 12 and a half, because I have been asking you all year long to get this ruler. It's something that I really like. It's small enough, but it's big enough. So I'm going to just use this one. And Creative Grids have like a little area right here that it covers really nice. So I just place it, then trim it. And I'm going to show you how I do that as well. So that's the one. Do you guys have suggestion? Is there a ruler that we should use it? 
No. <laughs> Oh, and it's... Uh, what we, do, we, do we have any other questions, Erin? We, we have quite a few ladies uh, and oh. gentlemen checking in from oh. all over the world today. Scotland. Oh, how nice. UK. Okay, I didn't put it on the right point. I want to be exactly... Do you see what I just did? I don't allow myself. If something is not right, I fix it right away and keep going. You know, with the fabric, it's going to pull, it's going to push, it's going to stretch, and the thing's going to be moving. You know, it's not like working with wood. So it's important that if we can give a little bit of accuracy, that is very important. But then on another hand, just remember, it's just a fun project. Don't drive yourself crazy. It doesn't have to be perfect. I like it. Finish. More important than perfect, perfect. Oh. Guys, do you know, I love sewing. I love sewing. I love stitching. I love sewing. So look at this. I just, uh, I'm going to go back here and clip this area because I need more pieces. So this one was our first one that we did. Okay. And I'm going to take the pin. That's going to be the first. And I'm using my little pin cushion with magnet in it. It's so nice. And I'm going to go ahead and trim it because I want to turn the uh, piece so that way I can go ahead and place my next piece. So what I did is I placed my ruler right on a, uh, a stitch line and uh, I have a quarter inch away from it. So right here, uh, I'm using the Creative Grids ruler. There is a quarter inch and I'm staying quarter inch from the stitch line. Okay. I place the mark dotted mark right on it. Perfect. And I'm also paying attention again. Do you see that 45 degree line? I'm back at that line. I want to make sure that that line is keeping me nice and organized. And now I'm going to gently trim it. Beautiful. Done. Oh, look at how cute this is. I can't let this go. I'm going to stitch this right away. Let's see what is going to come out from those little leftovers. No, no, no. No miniature half square triangle quilt. <clears throat> You're going to have a lot of those cut off pieces because you're working on, uh, you know, from each tree, you're going to have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. So don't waste them. Maybe low, tiny, low something. Uh, you can make it. All right. This looks beautiful. I'm going now push the seam allowance towards the dark, push the seam and I'm only finger pressed it. And I like to do that because sometimes when you touch the iron, you stretch something and it's too much. And I love when I'm sitting down, use this little ruler, look at the, uh, that little presser and already I have it done. Now it's going to be time to put this side on. I'm going to match the side. Perfect. And don't worry about those little zigzag low teeth from that jelly roll. We're going to trim them later on. It's okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and pin it for myself. I always pin it. Do you pin? Do you like to pin? And I use patchwork pins or I recently got a new pins from Alex Anderson. Her pins are just wonderful. She was so kind and donate some pins and uh, goodies to our retreat. Thank you, Alex. That was just so much. Uh, so much fun to enjoy those gifts. All the girls at the retreat loved it. So again, I'm starting on the top. Notice that I pushed my seam allowance towards the dark. I'm going to start stitching right here on the top. I'm staying on the right side of that line. Very gentle. I mean, you can be right on a line. I'm doing this because I do need the room to turn this over. So right there, I'm going to do this and now beautifully stitch. All right, let's stitch. No, 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 no. This is great. Any other questions do we have? Yes, um, Nancy was wondering, for when you made your larger quilt for Holiday Forest, yes. what fabrics did you use in that one that was different than the smaller version? So for this one, I took a jelly roll from Seamstress. Let me see if we have one. If we don't, we can ask Michael to get one for us. No, I used that one. It was from this bucket. So I used the Jelly Roll from Seamstress Collection and the Seamstress Collection and Linen Texture 2 matches. So it's a really nice, good match. You don't have to worry about some of the colors. 
and notice that what I did is I would have some printed and some uh, um, solids from linen texture. Notice that how cute it looks to give it. And look at the tree trunk. And once I put a quilting on, the quilting really shows so nice on the um, jelly rolls that are from linen texture. I had so much fun. We quilted this yesterday just for you guys for the show. I don't have the binding on it yet, but I'm super excited about over the weekend I'm going to do the binding. So I'm um, stitch this. I'm not going to cut it out yet. I'm going to go ahead and start. Do you see what I'm doing? I um, did a chain sewing so I wouldn't have long threads. I, everything has to be nice and clean and beautiful. I'm kind of that way. So um, what I'm doing is now I'm stitching back, bringing the pieces back and finish the other side. And I try to remember that I want to be on the other side of the line when I go on the other side just to get a really nice stitches. Please tell me who is stitching. Is anybody sewing with me? Are you just uh, watching and visiting? And then as soon as we're done, you're going to be sewing. I'm excited for you. This is going to be wonderful. Is anybody that already made the trees? I want to say there was a couple ladies that said that they did. And uh, we, we did reach out and see who was going to be sewing with us today. And a couple of ladies are. And I just want to. And Trissa is actually making 80 stars from the seamstress quilt yes! today with us. So. With us. So good. Yep. And um, I do have to say, um, there was so so cute look at this i just clipped this little triangle i'm gonna open the seam on that cute little triangle open it up so it's nice and small for miniature quilts for small pieces i like to open the seams it really is nice it's gonna be so cute i'm gonna make a bunch of those all my leftovers i'm gonna use it up and maybe make something small uh, and fun oh i already have a cute idea oh look at this I didn't finish one project and I'm already starting another one. Do you have that same problem? Oh, it's too much fun, I have to tell you. So I'm pulling my pins out and now the pieces are coming back to me. So I'm going to be going, go ahead and gently trimming it right there. Oh, this is going to be wonderful. So trim it. I'm going to save this for later for my little sewing. I don't want to distract you and start something. We only have a little bit of time. Do we have any other questions, Erin? Um, well, let's see here. Everyone's actually answering what they're working on. So we have Marilyn. She's working on her first tree, and she's using batiks that she had in her I stash. I love that. Yes, so we, if you're going into your own stash and pulling out the fabrics, remember you have 20 trees, and you want it to have 20 different colors of fabric, or you could do all different scraps. Remember, you're, uh, you're starting up with two and a half inch strips. Can you imagine to do exchange with your friends? Gather 20 friends. Each person brings a strip and you guys swap it. And then you end up with beautiful fabric from your girlfriend's stash. And you could sign it on them and use this as your signature quilt. Why not? You can do anything. So notice that I just finished the bottom part and I pushed my seam allowance towards the dark. I want to hide it right there. So I have that part finished. It looks quite nice. I'm going to check shortly if I did a good job. If not, it's okay. I'm going to give myself a second chance and do it again and again and again because 20 blocks give you great practice. One thing that I have learned in quilting is to be kind to myself that yes, sometimes things come out really, really good, but sometimes they don't, but it's okay. Keep going. Now, this is something that I questioned when I was working on my quilt and I had to make a choice. So this is the tip of the quilt. Notice it. This is going to be the top, this part right here. So, <clears throat> In the pattern, I chose to write for you guys to push the seam allowance towards the dark. So both sides going to be pushed towards the dark. This create a little bit extra bulk right here. But the plus was because I'm using a um, 
like a solid background, I was worried about any of the fabric peeking through it. So, and also when I did that, the point right here raised it up. It was just beautiful, perfect. So that's what I did for all my blocks. But I noticed if it's too bulky for you, you can, if you wanted to, push the seam allowance one towards and one away. But I would do this only if this is maybe with a print a little bit more busy so you don't see the seam allowance from behind. So for now, I'm going with the pattern and I'm going to push it the way how I told you to and keep that nice and beautiful. Wow, I'm so excited. <clears throat> I'm going to grab a drink. Do not forget, drink, drink, drink during your stitching. Always put a bottle of water or make a nice tea for yourself. I made a nice tea for myself this morning and Erin reminded me, like, make sure you have your tea. <laughs> And you know what? Mm. While you're taking a sip of your tea, we do yeah. have some questions rolling in. Okay, um, that's exciting. Now I'm gonna keep sewing so that way we finish our block together. Perfect. Yes. Um, and really quick, Tina is not sewing. She's making 144 cookies, and Stop that's it. just as much work. So. Excuse me. <laughs> wow, that's so fabulous. And oh. We had some cookies this morning here in the office too. I was super excited about it. Last night, I got a chance to make one of my favorite cookies uh, or cake called Tasty Cakes. So it's this really yummy, fluffy cake, very thin, just one inch, and a layer of peanut butter and chocolate. I know, peanut butter and chocolate, you can't go wrong. You no, can't go no, wrong. you can't. I know but that's awesome, 100 cookies. <laughs> Oh, I'm excited about the holidays Yes, and, when... and baking and seeing my kids and just being with you guys doing some stitching. And even when you are by yourself and, you know, please know I'm with you in my uh, heart and my soul. I think of you guys all the time. I know many of you um, email me and, you know, we do uh, our mystery quilts together. And speaking of mystery quilts, are you excited for next year mystery quilt? I am so excited for you guys. You are going to have a great surprise. We had so much fun last year and the year before. It almost start becoming a little tradition for us to do a mystery quilt. So make sure you finish your mystery quilt so you can be ready, set, go for next year and we're gonna do it but this this time of the year it's important to take care of yourself it's important to take care of your loved ones and make sure to take some time to quilt relax and enjoy this time so notice it i have my second piece done so excited how are we doing on this one? Oh, it's done so i'm gonna finish it up i love this machine because it has the scissors on it too it cuts it for me so it's so easy i'm gonna pull those out boy i'm really proud of my pieces i was really a little stressed about it you know it's sometimes hard when you sew front of the camera and I wanted to make sure that I show you everything that I'm doing that looks nice and just really excited about it. So this is going to be looking really good. I just trimmed it. I'm rushing a little bit because I want to show you all of the wonderful things. Now, any more questions? Yes. Um, if they are going to want to make the larger one behind you, they are curious if a fat eighth bundle would be enough or what would you recommend? So, um, fat aid bundle, so depends how many pieces are in a fat aid bundle. It really, I have to tell you, I was shocked how much I got it out of jelly roll and uh, you know, how much uh, I had leftovers. So, and you need, like I said, 20 strips for the quilt to do, each tree pretty much needs a uh, one strip. So what I, I think fat, fat eight would be nice one. I would go with the flaw and guess what? You can always add some fabric. You can always mix some stuff from your stash and pull those cute little fabrics that you have been hiding, you know, and oh, this one goes right there. Um, fat eight could be a nice start. 
you know if you give me some time i can look at the measurements and tell you exactly maybe for next blog for next week we can tell you you know how many tree you get from fat quarter how many tree you get from fat eight how many trees you get from once we know from one strip of jelly roll you get a one and a half tree how do i know it because i got a one and then the leftovers went into that quilt so super excited about that look at this in no time as we were talking i have finished all my pieces so now what i'm going to do is uh, you can go ahead and take this to your ironing board and press it i'm gonna go ahead and just put my ruler over and trim those little zigzag teeth i just want everything to look beautiful wow really really nice and trim it beautiful okay my first piece is trimmed then i'm gonna go for my next one oh wow i'm so happy this looks wonderful don't forget to say to yourself you did a good job you know if you don't say to yourself if you do not appreciate how nice things come out who is going to do that what sometimes my kids do it michael do it quite often tells me i did a good job but sometimes we forget to remind ourselves how precious we are and how good we are and how nice we work on our things so make sure you are loving yourself and be good to yourself that's very very important right there all right i trim all the pieces wow this is gonna be so much fun i'm excited about it are you now any more questions erin yes so you have your pinehurst uh quilt hanging behind you yes and uh we had a couple of questions wondering if there were templates for that one yes we have a template for pinehurst as well as we have the best video on this quilt how to make the blocks and also i taped the video how to make the mini pinehurst because you can take the same templates and do the trees in many different sizes so please please go to our website and go to our youtube channel uh, search for the video called pinehurst templates and you can go ahead and see how much fun we had last year when we were doing winter village quilt alone i did some mini trees and showed you how to do that look at this we just finished trimming this time i'm gonna bring this a little bit closer i want the one last look that all my colors are going the right direction all the pieces everything looks great all right i'm gonna start by sewing this to this i'm gonna place my pieces right sides together i'm gonna shake them off a little bit because some of the darker low things got stuck and i don't want that to be stuck in and give me uh, get into my scene so right there i'm gonna place it right sides together i'm gonna use a beautiful pin pin the beginning right there and then go ahead and pin the other side the end he matched it up quite well guess what not all my pieces were matching perfectly this is coincident that just front of you everything looks great sometimes when things are not matching from left to right notice it what i'm going to do i'm going to center how do you do that i'm going to fold my piece in half i'm gonna gently pinch it to crease it then i know where the middle is of this piece then i'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing right here gently pinch it to crease it and now i can go ahead and place my two pieces together match the crease to crease put a pin through that middle right there do you see what i'm doing i'm preparing this for sewing and i'm gonna go ahead now match it up you don't want to pull you don't want to stretch but you want to match it up if possible see now it's matching perfectly and it was a little bit off just by one of a one eighth of an inch but now it's the time to nicely adjust it make sure you pin it on this side yes that's it and now i'm gonna go ahead and guess what because i'm using a quarter inch seam allowance i'm gonna go ahead and switch that food on my sewing machine i want to go back to my quarter inch food don't forget to do that because then you may be having a problem with not having the right measurements and we're gonna go ahead place it 
close i'm pulling the pin away i'm setting my piece right there following nice quarter inch seam and i'm gonna start sewing i lower my needle to hold everything in place for me and i'm gonna start sewing and keep going oh when it goes over the stitch you know over the seam you have to slow down and make sure that everything is going in under the foot really nice oh this machine is so nice and fast and notice that i'm coming up to the seam i'm gonna go ahead grab one of my long butterfly pins i like them because i can push with that pin or if you have a nice stiletto and oh there's so many beautiful stilettos and tools out there that you can treat yourself for the holidays and i just make sure that that seam didn't roll up i sewed this and again i'm doing chain sewing I sew the sets of two. This is my second set. Perfect. I'm gonna go right there, start sewing. Super. My pin back in hand help me with making sure that I have it if I need it. This is lovely. Oh wow, this is gonna be such a cute tree. Guys, I had so much fun sewing this. You you need to try it and do chain sewing because if you do all your little squares trim it do it then suddenly you're building this forest you're planning a forest without getting your hands dirty and going outside you get lost in the woods of scraps just enjoying and i cannot wait you play with your scraps and make sure please 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 post on your uh instagram pictures of your quilt so i get to see it look at this i just finished it i'm not going iron yet i want to show you something that it's important okay so don't iron yet this is my second set right there perfect so now i'm gonna sew this to this so again i place the right sides together i check it's matching good if it was not matching i would start matching from the middle so right there i'm gonna put a pin on the left beautiful i'm gonna pin it on the right where we finish right there and let me see yeah quite nice i'm gonna put a pin it through the middle too because it's long so i don't want it, anything move i want my trees to be nice and uh, straight but if they're not it's okay just keep going keep going keep doing because only practice makes things nice and i'm gonna put those pins away from my sewing machine so they don't get lost someplace here i'm only keeping my little butterfly pin i'm gonna lower my needle to hold that spot and i'm gonna start sewing oh michael is enjoying this too michael has been the man behind the camera for us this whole year and i want to take a moment and thank michael and thank aaron because you know this show would not be possible without those two amazing people that make sure that every week we work hard to either tape a video or create a live show for you and you know make sure that we visit with you guys and have some fun any more questions erin um, about a previous fabric line an older one christine yeah. was wondering if evergreen will ever be back in production oh uh, you know um maybe possible this is a great idea what it's amazing about endover they do look at it if there is demand on a fabric they do reprint the fabrics but you know uh we do have a beautiful brand new collection in greens coming out for next year called noel and it's gonna come out sometimes beginning of the year in the spring it is stunning so if you wanted to you can go to endeavor's website go and see noel you can see all the fabrics that are coming in it it is beautiful and the quilts i did oh they're so so nice the one quilt i did is with our alaska ruler and i can't wait to make that one with you right away when i see a little thread sticking up i clip it because i like my housekeeping i don't like threads hanging off my project so right there i right away clean it make sure that everything looks nice and i pin the beginning i'm gonna pin it on this side and this is our last seam 
And do we have any more questions? Uh, we have one last question. And, Wonderful. Um, that is from Margaret. And so speaking of Creative Grid, she was wondering, have you ever used the folded corner clippers to do your trees? No, but I should. I think that ruler is amazing. And also Doug has a ruler, uh, one of my friends that does, uh, you know, you can clip the corners with it. I just, I just didn't do it yet. I should, maybe that should be added to my Christmas list because that's one of the things that I don't have it yet. So look at this, I'm excited about it. Something to look forward to it. So there are just the most, we are so lucky in quilting industry that we have so many wonderful tools and so many wonderful rollers. So look at this. I just finished my block. As soon as you finish, I know you're going to be excited to go ahead and right away iron it. Wait one second. What I would do is finish all my blocks, then um, I would lay out my quilt just to see where the colors are, you know, just to plan it out. Then you go going to sew a, a rectangle, light rectangle, just a strip to the bottom or to the top of the trees. Half of the blocks have it on the top, half of them have it on the bottom. And this is important. The blocks that have the strip on the top, you're going to push all the seams up. The blocks that have the strip on the bottom, you're going to push all the seams down. Pay attention when you're pushing your seams down that the colors don't peek through it. I had to pay attention to that so my colors do not show through it. And I probably miss one or two, but I tried my best. Now, why did I push the seams in the opposite direction? Because it's going to make your life nice and easy when you're sewing your blocks together to lock the seams in between your blocks and it's going to be super easy to do it. So when I have some that it's going to go up and then I have some seam blocks that the seams go the opposite. When I put my blocks together, this seems going to lock right here really nice. So remember, leave those rectangles to the last moment and then you can take your blocks and this strip will remind you, oh, I'm pressing towards that strip. Oh, I'm pressing towards that strip. And that way you have half a half done. Do we have any other questions for today? Um, a lot of thank yous for you though and holiday wishes and they're so thank thankful you for so all much. of your tips and tricks and your inspiration is what we're really seeing a pattern of so thank you thank you thank you i wish you the most wonderful holidays and please keep quilting i look forward to a lot of fun projects with you guys next year and just want to let you know our block of the month, it's live on our website and I would love you to join me in for our next year Lady Tulip block of the month. We're going to have monthly videos to show you how to make those beautiful six inch blocks. The fabrics are stunning for this quilt. There's so many wonderful designs that we're going to be making together and every month you will receive fabrics Either you can choose the pre-cut one or regular kit and every month you will receive everything you need for nine blocks. We're going to do three designs, three blocks from each design and in no time we're going to have all these beautiful blocks to make a scrappy beautiful quilt. I'm so excited for you guys so happy quilting, have a wonderful holidays and I see you next year.